what's the word, guys? All right, so uh, this is gonna be a quick one here. Um, my last video, I was talking about a uh, truck that I was working on, or was gonna work on. Um, it is a 2020 Ram 3500 Dually, um, and the issue was a no start. Uh, basically, customer stated that uh, they had used it to pull they got back to the house, um, shut the truck off in the morning. They came back to start the truck and it just wouldn't start anymore. Um, so they said that it was, you know, uh, jerking and surging or whatnot previously. Um, and of course that, that led to this happening or whatnot. So um, I went and looked at the truck. Um, my... Um, my scanner wasn't working correctly at the time. Um, I was using a bypass cable, and it just it didn't it didn't it didn't want to it didn't want to play nice. So anyway, um, after getting auto off and all that, I was able to get in um, and bypass security gateway uh, with no issues, and then I was able to read you know um, data streams and things like that. So um, basically, what was there? There was a lot of stuff on there, and I think it's because they were cranking on it, and I think the batteries are dying. It was, you know, all six all six injectors were circuit open, um, and then there was also a P0092 fuel pressure control circuit high. Um, so with that, what basically fuel pressure control circuit? Uh, I guess different manufacturers call it different things. Um, some people think of fuel pressure control or fuel pressure regulator um, as the FCA or the fuel control actuator and that is actually the one that is sitting right here and this one's been upgraded from the, the recall that was done on the CP4 to a CP3. Um, so that this right here is your actual FCA, fuel control actuator. That's what determines how much fuel is going to actually be in, uh, run through the CP3 to make high pressure fuel. Now, another thing that you do have on the back of this, let me get up here real quick. And it's gonna be hard to see if you can see. And it is hard to see. So on the back of this rail, and I'll show you what the part looks like. It's, it's on the very back of the rail, the last thing on the rail. And um, it's got a two wire connector on it. Um, and this particular truck had the P092, which is circuit high on the fuel pressure uh, regulator. Um, so basically, going through all the diagnostic steps, you need to uh, pull the connector and then also pull um, the uh, ECM connector. And the ECM on these is located here at the bottom. And again, it's, it's really hard to see down there, but it's down there. Um, you need to pull the connector on there and you need to check continuity from the ECM bolt connector to the fuel pressure uh, regulator connector up there. So you're looking for continuity on both wires um, and of course you should be at what 0 0.2 ohms resistance or whatnot um, if the wire is good. If it's OL or out of limits then you know that there's a break in the wire somewhere. Um, so I, I went ahead and I, I pulled everything off here just to get easy access and it, it's not the funnest thing to get in there guys There's and this one has an ice and so now you got the transmission fill tube right here um, So I pulled the ECM connector pulled the connector off of there check continuity Both wires were good and then from there what you need to do is also check each wire uh, to see if it's short to ground um, or um, uh, short to power so any any type of short um, when I checked both I didn't I didn't have anything going on with either or uh, so in this case it, it was the fuel pressure uh, regulator that was bad um, so I went ahead and replaced that now when you have a p0092 from I'd never dealt with this code before I'd never really seen it uh, this truck is a 2020 and it has hundred and fourteen thousand miles on it <coughs> so <clears throat> Basically, once you go through all the diagnostic steps um, and you find that your your harness is good, and as long as your harness is, I mean, hasn't been rubbed in anything, and this truck is fairly new, so I wouldn't imagine it would have rubbed, but I, I've seen it happen on new trucks. Um, then you go to that uh, fuel pressure control regulator and you replace it. 
Now, to replace it, um, when you get back there, the nut on that thing is 30 mils. So you're gonna have to have a 30 mil wrench, um, and odds are your 30 mil wrench is gonna be long, no matter what, unless you got like a crow's foot or different tools. Uh, so if you need to buy a cheap 30 mil and cut it so you can get in there, go ahead and do that. Um, also, um, this truck had been to the dealer to get diagnosed, uh, and I think they were quoting him like $1,900 for the repair. Um, but what I did also notice is the, the dealer, the harness, instead of, it looked like somebody tried to back probe it and couldn't get in there right because they tore the insulation off of the back of the wire. Um, and then on the actual pigtail itself, the uh, pins were expanded. So um, with that being said, guys, make sure you check your harness, check your pins. Sometimes those pins get corrosion in them and the corrosion itself will make the pins expand and not make a good connection and you find yourself in that situation again. So um, I didn't take any video of this. Uh, like I said, it's not fun to get down there and it's not fun to get back there. Uh, needless to say, there was a lot of cuss words being thrown around, a lot of frustration. And uh, it was in, I was in the grass because the truck wouldn't start. And if you drop something, <laughs> Uh, Jesus, it, good Lord, who knows where it goes sometimes. Um, just be aware of that, okay? So this is just a heads up, guys. If you all have any issues with the P0092, do not get it confused with the fuel control actuator. Um, it's called different things. The P0092 only has to do with the fuel pressure regulator on the back of the fuel pressure rail, all right? Now, another thing, if you try to get it off, when you loosen that nut, and I'll show you right now, you're gonna think that you need to spin the whole thing off. Like it, it just, it, it has a, a, a connector on the on the side of it like that, and I'll show you again. Um, and you're gonna think you need to spin it off, but there's a steel tube line coming from the back of the head, the return fuel from the back of the head, that goes to, uh, basically, goes from the back of the head, comes down over here, tees off, and then goes back to the fuel filter housing. Um, you do not have to mess with any of that. The it actually has a jam nut on it uh, that'll rotate. So, and I'll show you right now. So don't take anything else apart. You're, you're not gonna have to. Once you get it loose, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, guys? So let me, uh, let me walk over here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. it up so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. what the fuel pressure regulator looks like this is the 30 mil nut that you need to get off all right so you're gonna have to get in there you have to loosen this and take it off now usually this sits in here and there's a steel tube line that sits about right here well let me show you it sits about right here okay um, and when you try to spin it off it's gonna hit it on the other side you're not gonna be able to get it off but what you're gonna have to do and actually let me, let me set this camera down real quick show you what I'm talking about when you try to get this off the rail is gonna be going that way okay so front of the engine rear of the engine rear of the 
high pressure uh, common rail and this of course threads into the back of that rail. So when you try to get this off you're going to think it spins as a unit and you come back here and you're going to see that it's going to hit that steel tube line. All right? That is not the case. This nut spins on its own. Okay, It's completely free. So hold this right here and it's going to be a little bit challenging but you get back there once you get it loose enough you can thread this nut off completely and take it out. All right? So don't get it confused guys, P0092, this is what it is. All right, so check your harness, make sure your harness is good. You can't ohm this out, you can't really do many tests of this. I mean, it is a solenoid. So if you wanna test it, power, use a nine volt battery, use a 12 volt battery, it doesn't matter. Um, put power to ground on each, and if you hear a click, more than likely, this thing is still good. If it doesn't click, that means it's seized or it's busted and it's not working anymore. Okay. So other than that, if this clicks, it means it's probably still good. And you need to check your harness and your ECM connectors. Check your pins. Uh, make sure there's no corrosion. Make sure there's no expansion. Check your harness and, and it feeds into the main harness. You'll see it if you trace it back. Look for any spots where it's rubbing, where you might think it'd be rubbing. Check the very end of the connector um, because sometimes the way they are, the way they're bent, it starts to stretch and it'll actually It'll actually tear that, that copper wire on the inside, okay? So make sure you check that stuff, guys. All right, if you got any questions, like I said, I'm going to make this a quick one. If you got any questions or comments, um, throw, a, uh, throw a comment down on the bottom. Let me know, and I will be getting back to you. All right, we'll see you all later.